Where Christ Jesus will reign supreme, where love and peace will ever be, where grace and truth will find a place. Give us a home, give us a peace, give us a place where Christ will reign. Give us a home, give us a peace, give us a place where Christ will reign. Make us a home, O oh Lord, we say, where God is seen. I pray and raise, make our life a praise the Lord, make him a man. You are listening to Praying Parent Prayer Group, 3PG Family Radio Broadcast. At 3PG, we are committed to helping parents take spiritual responsibility for the overall welfare of their children. We hope this episode is a blessing to your family. Here is your host, Olumafin Kende Benjamin. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we bless you. Thank you for your grace and help. Thank you for your mercies that we have received. Thank you for your light in our darkness. Thank you for your joy in our heart. Thank you for healing and thank you for your many helps. We say blessed be your name in Jesus' name. Thank you for your words that we send to us from time to time. And thank you because this time again you will speak to us. We say blessed be your name in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask for speed and for grace in our journey through life and help us to be what you want us to be. Glory to your name forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Speak to us now and let your name be glorified. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In this edition, it shall be considering the topic title, Laban, Jacob and God, the story of two families and the God factor that separates them. Laban, Jacob and God, the story of two families and the God factor that separates them. And today, by God's grace, we'll be considering episode 6, the speed that is not usual. Episode 6, and we'll be focusing on the speed that is not usual. And our text is taken from Genesis 31, 17 to 23. Genesis 31, 17 to 23. And in verse 17, it is said, Then Jacob rose up and set his sons and his wives upon camels. And he carried away all his cattle and all his goods which he has gotten, the cattle of his getting which he has gotten in Padan Aram, for to go to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. And Laban went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were our fathers. And Jacob stole away unaware to Laban the Syrian, and that he told him not that he fled. So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river, and set his face towards the Mount Gilead. Verse 22, And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled. 23, And he took his brethren with him, and pursued after him seven days' journey, and they overtook him in the Mount Gilead. We are continuing our study of these two families, the family of Jacob, and the family of Laban, and how God factor define one over the other. And we studying Genesis 31 in particular, some time now, and we are trusting the Lord to continue from where we stopped last week. Jacob from our test, having had God that he should return to his country with a promise, I will be with thee. In Genesis 31 verse 3, Genesis 31 verse 3, he arose and with his sons and his wife, he put them upon camels. And his cattle with him is good, and all that he had got him in Padan Aram to go to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan. Genesis 31, verse 18. It was now 20 years in Ezai, 
Jacob really thought of the day he will return to his father. He must have zero his mind to live his entire life in Padan Aram. He knew his brother was as strong as himself, and that as long as Esau lives, the possibility of him returning home is never going to happen. But in our test on the other girl, Jacob was set to go back home this time around. He had very little time to share his idea with his wife and children, having heard from God that he was set himself on the journey back home, and set to go back home to his father Isaac and to his country he did. He knew the anger of his brother Stephen as it were twenty years earlier when he fled from home, and the danger of death had not passed. Jacob was now armed with the promise of God, who have asked him to go back to the country of his birth, and with the promise, I will be with thee. I will be with thee, God assured him, and with that, Jacob knew a thousand Esau won't be able to hinder him from reaching the promised land, that he was still afraid of his brother despite the promise. That's very true that there were things he cannot explain and doesn't know how God will do them, despite having the promise. Yes, that is true also, and that he has made plan as a human being for the uncertainties that lies ahead of him, despite God having promised him that he will be with him, he still has some uncertainties that he thought must lie ahead, and that too, yes, very true. In all this, it is also true that Jacob had God clear and well, and that he must obey God, and despite his fear and uncertainties that lie ahead of him, he has to just continue and go towards his father Isaac. Did Jacob have all the fact and figure of what will happen and how they will happen along his way to reach his father Isaac? No. Should he obey God and go ahead and return home despite so many unanswered questions? Yes. Even when he doesn't understand everything, yes, he knew God had gone ahead of him and that his journey back to his father is a journey into certainties and a journey into destiny than when he fled the wrath of Esau 20 years back on his way to Padan Aram. He was alone when he left home in a hurry in the dark of the night, but now had grown and multiplied with wives, sons, male and female servants and cattle. Sheaves and goats and all must be protected and preserved from the danger that lies ahead. Even here too is living in a hurry and on our way to Laban his master going home to his father. There come a time in all of our lives where we must face our fears and confront our uncertainties and worries and personal weaknesses and inherent failures in sins and trespasses. A time come we must face our fears our sins, our trespasses, and our, all our weaknesses and personal failure. A time we must confront our darkness and return to our Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose life is our light, and whose kingdom and peace lies ahead of us that believe, despite the present trouble. It doesn't matter what we have gone through, it doesn't matter how far we have gone, a time always comes for the children of God to return home to their Father. Like Jacob was armed with the word and unchanging promise of the Father, where there will be no darkness too dark that will not be dispelled away once in the embrace arm of the Father, and the Father never refuses anyone. All he asks, Come unto me in repentance, and I will save you. The day the prodigal son decided to return to his Father and to his country, that was the day God could start a new life in him. He no longer speed and roof on his own detail. There is a wind he cannot explain, pushing and helping him sail home with speed beyond his strength. The moment each one of us realizes how much we have tried and how our need of divine help, and in that same moment take believing step towards the Father and back to his peace and love in true repentance and readiness to obey, it is in that same moment our speech changes just. We now no longer travel and sail through the waters of life on our own charge and at our own pace. We now travel at a different pace and at a different speed, and it is called the God's speed. Traveling on God's speed not automatically remove all the dangers. 
It does not automatically locate us away from the valleys of death and fear that lay ahead of us. It does not automatically remove all the temptations of our path. Nor does it eliminate those moments when it seems the law is asleep in the belly of our boat, totally unconcerned about the present trouble and the storm that threaten our collective existence and faith. But it does guarantee us its presence. Assures his love once repentance has come in and his grace in all our troubles once armed with his truth and promises. The prodigal son had to travel through the dangers and confront his fear and ran home believing the love of his father was so sufficient for him once in his father's embrace. And thus was what prepared Jacob as well. He knew since father Isaac will be all comforting and with the promise of God, the one he called the fear of his father Isaac. Nothing could stop him again, and with God's spirit, he was said to go home. As soon as he make up our mind to serve God and to be what he wants us to be, there is always a God's spirit that will propel us and help us all the way back to the Father. No one walks with God and still travel through life on his own charge and at his own speed. And like many of us children of God, Jacob was totally unaware of this. He feeds the camel for his young children and wives and set on the journey towards Mount Gilead, which he considered a safe distance from his troubled past under Laban. Without the knowledge of his overbearing father-in-law and host, he set on his way and he went away. That initial journey into freedom took Jacob, his family and all the animals with him three days from Padaram to Mount Gilead. Among the animals and the women that were with Jacob were those with little ones, so the need to move as slowly as they can was overwhelming. The women and the children and the animals cannot be pulled along too fast, so the need for rest, regular camping and break as they move towards Mount Gilead on route Canaan, where his father is. Genesis 3, 12-14. Genesis 3, to 14. Therefore, by all standards, Jacob and family traveled at a slow pace and had gone through this journey before news got to Laban that his daughters and son-in-law with their children are stolen away and was the all the entire cattle and animal that Laban and his son were secretly hoping were theirs had been taken away in the process. Tell me a taskmaster who will want to let go his best servant, on whose charge he has been blessed with so much in twenty years, certainly not a cunning and selfish father-in-law like Laban. In oriental times, it was a great crime deserving of severe punishment and death in some cases for a servant to steal away without the knowledge of his master. Laban set out with his best men and pursued after Jacob after the latter has gone three days' journey. But it is incredible to note that it took Laban seven days of hot pursuit, angry pursuit, with the finest of his men to catch up with a group made of women, children, and animals that can barely move not more than a lamb who have gone in a race with horses. How else can it be explained that a journey of three days with several unnumbered stops in between for a group made up of women and children, goats and sheep with young, that such journey that took this group three days took strong men, possibly on horses, seven days to cover. The answer is called God's speed, as a result of God factor working on the side of one man against the other. Just as it was in the crossing of the Red Sea, the cloud by day was also the pillar of fire by night. The pillar of cloud that was the light that helped illuminate the path of one, and at the same time, the cloud was the trouble and darkness for the other. Jacob was going as slowly as his wives, his children, and his animals, heavy with their young, could go. He knew the possibility of dangers loom once Laban found out he had stolen away with his family, but the speed with which they go cannot be more than they were doing lest he will drive the animal into their death, just as I just quoted in Genesis 3. He must have been concerned with the slow pace with which they were moving, 
but he couldn't help more than committing their lot into the hand of God that told him, I will be with thee. But to his dismay, however, he thought they were moving so slow. He thought they were traveling at snail's pace and must have been wishing they had moved faster than they were doing. So he can move far away from the danger that was Laban, but unknown to him that even when they seemed to be moving at so slow a pace, he and his entire household were moving at the greatest speed known to man. Their flight was on ego's wing, as God's wings was propelling them, even though they knew it not. God speed through them through this journey, through the same space that the fineness of Laban took seven days to cover in hot, angry pursuit. We sometimes think we are not gaining speed, but we are God speed to those who are found by it in just a year may never be covered in ten years by the strongest of men whose life is not helped by God. Whenever it can be said that God is slow, his speed is always ahead and better than the fastest of men. They were slow in their own eye, but God was at this speed to them. God's speed may appear slow, but no wind in hair can cover in a thousand years what God will conveniently cover in a day. Because all things, including time and speed, are subject to Him. Some ground you have covered, some progress that looks so slow you are, that you have made, as little as you think they are, it will surprise you that what God has helped you to do in a year, those achievements you have made within such a little time, can take someone else without God's speed and without those divinely inspired help you receive. Ten good years to reach the same end that you have gotten to within such a little time. God's speed can be slow, yet faster than the best of men and technology combined. Sometimes we make comparison between ourselves and the people around us. We look at our friends and how they seem to be flying in their career and choosing feed. Then we bemoan how slow we have moved in life and destiny. But we take second critical look at the peace in our heart and the blessing in our families and the joy that defines our daily lives. We may soon see we have been wrong all along and that we have moved at the speed of light ahead of many we have compared ourselves to in the past. And soon come in agreement with the word of a great apostle that says but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves and not wise. 2 Corinthians 10 12. 2 Corinthians 10 12. As long as we keep measuring ourselves with ourselves, using the standard the world set before us, we will never be able to see the many good things God has done for us, and with the speed we had help us reach those heights. Every child of God has God factor on their side, and God's speed propelling them all the way. When we run at God's speed, the world may ridicule us, they may cast aspersions on us and ridiculously call us names to wear us down and tear us down, all in an effort to discourage us and slow us down that we might see ourselves the way they want us to see ourselves and rate our spirit with their eyes and disdain the help of God that is with us. They know they are not being helped with the same help we have received and they know they cannot get as far as we have gotten even with the best of their best. God's speed is all the believers need to succeed in life. Even when you think you are not making progress, there are people and families that will never get to where you are now in 20 years, even if they have help from men and demons. To say God has not helped us is not the truth. None of us can truly say we have not been helped despite the many troubles and the turbulence in the journey of life. Jacob and his family ran as fast as the weakest among the lambs and the flocks could go. It must have been such a slow pace in their own eyes, but when Laban caught up with them in Mount Gilead, they knew and they learned he took chosen men of war with Laban seven days to cover the same distance they had walked in three days. They were come to the realization and were being surprised as well how they were able to cover so much distance within such a short time. When God is in your journey, your speed will be divine. As for as many who stay true to this conviction, that there is a speed, called God's speed, reserved for those who believe, even when there are no reason to believe. 
the God factor always end in their favor, and same is true for all children of God who find and keep their place in the grace that is Christ Jesus, our covenant sacrificial lamb. May God bless you and keep a determined interest in you, and in all yours as he did for Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the friend of God, in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Jacob had many trouble, but despite them all, the God Father always come to his rescue through them all. And I pray God open our eyes to more truth as we steadily study these two families and the God Father that separated one from the other. When the believer's journey in life is at the believer's instance and strength, when his progress is determined and measured by the standard the world set before him, and when his joy is measured by what the world says he is, then his personal and family fortune inherent in the covenant of perpetuity and even faith in Christ Jesus will suffer. But where the believer's faith is rooted in the everlasting arm that is gently bearing him on the ego's wing as he journeys along, added to committed prayer and Bible study life, such art and such families will be heaven on earth no matter the trouble. As we saw in the marriage of Jacob and Rachel, the beloved, and Leah the homemaker who together built the house and the future tribe of Israel. May God bless you and keep you. May God make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may God put his name upon your children and bless them. Amen. And I pray that God will ask peace to you, prepare you all along, and help you reach your goal and his destiny and purpose for you in life. In a way only him can explain in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I believe you have been blessed. It's been Praying Parents Prayer Group Christian Ministry, 3PG Radio Broadcast. Join us same time on this same station next week. For prayer, counseling, and inquiry about the group or on today's topic, or to join and participate in our free online prayer conference, 11 p.m. every Tuesday from the comfort of your room, Kindly call or send SMS or WhatsApp message to 081-340-16069. 081-340-16069. Or you can visit at Upper Room Counseling Unit, Suite 47, Praise Plaza, beside Rano Filling Station, New Ife Road, Ibadan. You can also email us at 3pgprayingfamilies at gmail.com. And you can also visit our website www.3pgchristianministry.org for more family-oriented Christian materials that can make you the kind of parent you are called to be. Until next week at 3PG, we are committed to helping parents take spiritual responsibility for the overall welfare of their children.